I tell you a story about me and you Out on the water, surrounded by the blue They scream that only I'll be saved They tell myself the line that I just let it float away Yeah, I let it float away I let it float away I let it float away Previously on Sailing Zutara. We hooked up with our friends on Tandem Alaika, and after changing out our jib sail, together we sailed 650 nautical miles in six days from Panama to Ecuador. So we're pulling into uh, Bahia yeah. de Carquez in Ecuador. So it was a little sketchy. We had to have pilots come out, and they, they didn't look like they, they didn't take us the way that I would have gone on the charts. They took us the shortcut which shows that my boat wouldn't have made it through there in low tide, no way. And uh, they were talking on their cell phone, pointing different directions to somebody else. Like they were, they were- Is that them? No. Oh. Like they were confused. And so I, uh, I wasn't real excited about what we just did. Well, you can see the shoal that goes out yeah. right through yeah. there, shallow. There's the hurricane or no earthquake damage on these buildings. We are near Puerto Viejo, Ecuador, and it's a really nice place. Yeah, you're about to go on like 17 nights in the water. But uh, there's our pilots. They're kind of sketchy looking. It's our uh, new favorite word. It's our new favorite word. Sketchy. And Tandemalaika is uh, right there in front of us. So we finally got cell service, and Keith, the man, has 108 emails. That's exciting, huh? You got a lot of work to do. Uh, that's some uh, serious earthquake damage right there. Ecuador was hit by a 7.8 magnitude earthquake in April of 2016. It was the deadliest to strike Ecuador in over 70 years. Over 16,000 people were injured and 676 lost their lives. Now, nearly a year later, the structural and emotional rebuilding is still well underway. We all anchored in the muddy waters at Bahia de Carquez. So we made it through the Panama Canal. We've had a lot of different people ask us what was the cost of going through the canal. We used an agent to go through the canal and his name was Roy Bravo with Emanuel Agencies. His cost for the agent was $500. Out of the total cost of getting through the canal and all the paperwork and everything that went along that, it was $3,100 for our boat, six people. The money we spent for him to do everything was well worth it because when you get into Shelter Bay Marina, you gotta take it, if you're just getting in there, in order to clear customs and clear immigration, you have to go from Shelter Bay Marina in a cab across the ferry and then figure out where all the customs and all that stuff is over in Cologne. And Roy came right to our boat the next day, grabbed our passports, took care of everything, arranged all the inspections. We didn't have to do nothing. I mean, it was the easiest paperwork stuff we've done. It was, it was super easy. Roy Bravo did a good job. Beneteau. Beneteau. My boat, when I bought this boat, had a five-year warranty on it. It was very, one of the very few that Beneteau had put out on a boat from the bow to the stern. Everything's covered, except consumables. And so this boat had that, and it was, it was conveyed to me from the previous owner. And I was really worried about how it was going to be to deal with Beneteau over in France on warranty issues all around the world when we're in these different ports of these different countries. And what ended up being the case is, when we were in Fort Lauderdale refitting the boat and adding the things we added to it, uh, Denison Yacht Sales was our point person down there to cover things because they're the Beneteau dealer in the U.S. And Bob McCann at Denison Yacht Sales did an outstanding job. 
of uh, supporting us while we were in Fort Lauderdale. I got a little more concerned about it when we got out in the Caribbean. And so we, we started having some, you know, like the bow thruster. Everybody saw the bow thruster. That was about $1,200. And then I had an air conditioning uh, uh, soft start motor go out on the, on the cruise air air conditioning, which was another $500 or $600. And just a lot of little things that have gone out. Not, not at any fault of Beneteau, just things that break, things that wear out. Beneteau warrantied 100% what they were supposed to warranty in the uh, in their warranty agreement with us. I haven't had to come out of pocket for any expense on this boat that was warranted. So that's been a really good deal. And so Bob McCann and uh, Bob McCann and Juan over there, Dennis and Yacht Sales, I got to take my hats off to you guys. You guys did an outstanding job. All right, this is a question from uh, Bryce Clayton. Hello, Bryce. Glad you're watching our channel. Uh, Bryce has asked us, how far do you need to sail around dangerous areas to avoid them? Well, I'm not an expert on pirate waters, but this is what I do know. You can go to a lot of different websites, Noonside, Cruisers, Blogs, and different things, and you, you can hear the latest reports about activity and security activity going on. When we were, on, when we were cruising off the coast of Venezuela, Colombia, and even coming down here to Ecuador, I, you know, I choose to try to be about 50, 60, 70 miles off the coast. The farther out, the better. There's risk in no, no matter what you do. We run dark when we're on those coastlines. We, we turn off our AIS, turn off all our nav lights, and we just keep an extra eye out for boats. We have our radar going, so that shows up boats and, and different stuff like that. But and, and just don't go to those places. If there's the slightest bit of risk, just don't do it. It's, it's not worth it. It's not worth your family's safety. That's that's not my point of view, and that, that's what we've done. And we've had pretty good luck so far of, uh, of uh, avoiding any any problems with pirates did you have any pets in your life before the sailing life and if so what did you learn and research about cruising with pets uh, we had a little uh, dog that we had back in Montana and, and Dallas and we ended up having to give that little dog up for adoption because we couldn't bring her on the boat and she was precious to us but her name was Piper and uh, a little Jack Russell we'd had for a lot of years and she got went to a really nice family and uh, we didn't want to bring pets because there's so many countries that are anti-pet and with five kids on or four kids on the boat uh, we just limited on room i'd love to have a cat i'd love to have a bingo on board i love bingo cats it's just not doable for us right now with what we're doing and how we're doing things so a lot of places don't like pets so it's just better uh, right now until i get around the, the planet once to figure figure it all out that we're not going to have any pets on board even though i'd love to have a kitty cat on board we just thank you for watching. We're so honored that y'all watch our channel, and, and uh, we hope the videos are good. You know, we want to tell a good story and really tell what it's like to be out here on the water. So, uh, once again, thanks for uh, watching. If you have any questions, you can email me at Keith at Zatara. Uh, Keith at SailingZatara.com, and uh, be glad to answer those questions every once in a while. And uh, once again, thank you so much for watching. We really enjoy it, and we enjoy all y'all support. Look forward to the next one. Adios. Everywhere we went in Ecuador, we were walking. We also stopped by the local farmer's market and got some fresh fruit, veggies, and seafood. Finn bought an apple. Awesome. Yeah, that's the one to get. Is that it right? Normal. Not too big, not too small. <laughs> it's bodacious. Finn, hold this. Ceviche, por favor. Is this her? Yeah. Ceviche? Yeah. Uh, two pounds. Two pounds. A lot of ceviche. You got buy a lot of lemons. Limes. They're Limes. down there. Oh, I'm sure we can get it all here. You want to fry some? Uh... No. Although Keith wasn't hip on getting calamari, we went back to the boat, stocked up with lots of fresh goodies. 
Towards the end of our time in Ecuador, we took a three-day trip to Quito and ended up spending two of those days enjoying these little angels at the Ramar Orphanage. From the second we arrived, we had beautiful children holding our hands, playing games, and giving hugs. Yeah, when I, yeah, because right. Galapagos is Ecuador, so he said we can only spend 90 days. 90 so, days so we total. can stay two months, a month for sure. Okay, so just say we spend the month of April in Galapagos. Then we got a month of May getting to the exactly. Marquesas. So this area of the continent is just not doing so good. The earthquake in Ecuador and all the flooding in Peru, we changed our plans and decided not to go to Machu Picchu after all. We enjoyed our time in Ecuador, made the best of it, and got ready to go to the Galapagos shortly after. Join us next time as we head off into the Pacific Ocean, heading west to the Galapagos Islands.